All right. So um, now the truth is I was raised a fundamentalist, evangelical UCLA Bruin. <laughs> so I, I hope we can still get along, though. Yeah, we can. We can. Okay. All the anti-war people uh, can. That's right. <laughs> um, all right. So we have really big news this week involving Iran's nuclear program, which you regularly write about, especially for antiwar.com. Uh, two big stories, but let's start with the first story today. Uh, Fox News this morning carried a piece. There was a big press conference by something called the NCRI in Washington where they uh, claim to expose a new secret uranium enrichment facility at a place named Kazvin near Tehran. What can you tell us about that? Well, first of all, NCIR is National Council of uh, Resistance of Iran, which is, a, which is basically the political arm of Mujahideen uh, organization. Mujahideen organization is a terrorist organization listed by the State Department as a uh, uh, terrorist group. And most Iranians look at Mujahideen as a, not even as a terrorist organization, but rather as a terrorist cult. These people uh, left Iran uh, about two decades ago, and then they collaborated with Saddam Hussein during the Iran-Iraq war against Iran. After the Iran-Iraq war ended, Mujahideen helped Saddam to put down the rebellion by uh, uh, Kurdish forces in the, in the north and Shiite in the south. And since then, they have basically been a tool of foreign powers just in order to reach, to get to power to Iran. So they have no credibility inside Iran. Um, I'm sure they have some followers in the United States, for example, or in Europe, but they have no credibility within Iran. They have a terrible track record in making all sorts of claims about uh, what's happening within Iran. They were correct one time, and that was when in nine, uh, 2002, in August of 2002, they made an announcement about the existence of the Natanz enrichment facility, mm -hmm. uh, which later was confirmed by Iran. But even that time, the information was actually provided by Israeli intelligence services. And my sources at that time, when I was writing about it, told me that the Israelis actually offered this to Iranian monarchists who also opposed the Islamic uh, regime in Tehran. But Iranian monarchists, all of their nationalism, refused to go with the information and to publicize it. And then they offered it to Mujahideen, and the Mujahideen went public with the information uh, about the Natanz facility. So they have uh, no credibility within Iran, and they have a terrible track record about what's happening within Iran over the past many, many years. Now, their latest announcement, I haven't known any uh, place or site, even... Uh, uh, within a, I don't know, a circle of uh, tens of kilometers uh, from Qazvin, which is uh, uh, basically western Tehran, about 140 kilometers from Tehran, where anything close to a nuclear activity could, could be taking place. In other words, there is no uh, scientific center or any, any sort of lab that could be uh, uh, secretly converted into a, a nuclear site and where they can even enrich uranium according, uh, according to the claim that, that uh, uh, NCRI has made. Mm -hmm. All right, now in Washington, D.C., Mohammed, there's uh, a group called ISIS, uh, the International uh, Security something. Anyway, David Albright and his group, and they're kind of self-appointed private nuclear experts. Yes. And uh, a couple of points about him, uh, why I bring him up, is the first thing is uh, I spoke with him one time about the Mujahideen al-Khalq uh, that you're talking about here, uh, getting Natanz right. If they got one thing right, they got Natanz right. And he said, no, no, we got it. They were two days later. It was ISIS that really mm -hmm. broke the story about Natanz. And people should understand at the time that that secret was exposed, it was just a big, empty underground Walmart. It didn't get centrifuges uh, up and running uh, for a couple of years after that. Uh, so there was nothing illegal about it, even though it was secret. And then the other thing is that um, uh, Albright actually has a piece today uh, on the ISIS website. It's ISISonline.org, uh, actually ISIS-online.org. Yes. And uh, he actually dismisses these claims, these latest claims by the Mujahideen al khalq and, and the NCRI, and, uh, but basically reduces what they say down to a claim of, well, they're apparently perhaps digging tunnels into mountains. And that could be consistent right with what we saw at COM last fall where – and, and I, didn't the Iranians even announce that, yes, we are going to 
make secondary and, I guess, third dairy nuclear facilities separate from Natanz, enrichment facilities separate from Natanz, and we're going to put them under mountains because you keep threatening to bomb us. So it, is it possible that they're onto something here if there's a bunch of tunneling going on into some mountains out there near Kazim? Of course. I mean, it's always possible that they're doing something. But as you pointed out, uh, the head of Atomic Energy Organization of Iran, Ali Akbar Saleh, said just a couple of weeks ago that Iran intends to set up eight more enrichment facility in addition to what's being constructed of Om and the Natanz facility. So this is no secret. Uh, Iran has announced its, its, its intention. David Albright is president of uh, Institute for Science and International Security right. at, in Washington. And yes, he selectively uh, picks topics and, you know, he dismisses some and he uh, comments on other things. Um, but as even he has said, according to you, he dismisses the credibility of, of, of Mujahideen and their political arm, which is National Council of Resistance of Iran. So at this point, uh, if I were to guess, I would say it is not likely at all. But the fact that the uh, head of Atomic Energy Organization of Iran has already said that we are going to set up more enrichment facility. And the reason that they are going to do it is precisely because they are afraid of military attacks on Iran and enrichment uh, facility because they want to spread it out so that if they are attacked, uh, and they cannot all be destroyed at, at once. And that's the reason. And of course, when Iran does that, uh, regardless of what we think about uh, Iranian regime inside Iran, I, I, I must say... I, I, I should announce it here. And anybody who knows me knows that I am opposed to the Tehran regime here. But, but we are not talking about an internal matters which is for Iranians. We are talking about the national right of a nation and the double standard that the United States has regarding the Middle East and the nuclear power in the Middle East. So it's not, it's not so much supporting the position of the Islamic Republic, rather supporting the national right of a nation like Iran that has been under pressure by this country for the United States for the past three decades. So... Iran has um, uh, w um, largely uh, abided by its obligation under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Iran has co cooperated with the International Atomic Energy Agency. When Mohammad al Baradei was the Director General of, of, of the agency, he said that uh, the inspection of Iran's uh, nuclear program is the most intrusive and the most extensive inspection of any nuclear program in the history of International Atomic Energy Agency. And yet, even in the latest IAEA report that was publicized um, on Monday, Yukio Amano, the new uh, director general, again confirmed that there is no evidence that Iran has diverted any nuclear material uh, from peaceful purposes to non-peaceful purposes. I must say that Yukio Amano, since taking over from al Baradei, has basically uh, politicized IAEA to some extent, and we can talk about it if you want. And, uh, and in fact, the latest report that it came out uh, there are several points of contention about it that uh, we can discuss so that the, the, the listener uh, uh, can learn about it. But uh, even uh, Yukio Amano uh, uh, has not said that Iran has diverted. And in fact, after the report came out, there were a lot of noise about it uh, and what the new IAEA report means to the extent that the IAEA had to issue new uh, a statement clarifying what the report had said in order for people not to misinterpret what the report has said. Yeah, well, number one cause of misinterpreting what the report said is reading the New York Times and the writings <laughs> of William J. Broad and especially David Sanger, uh, who and, and the Washington Post and the rest of the entire media uh, on, uh, on Monday night and Tuesday morning announced that, oh my goodness gracious, the Iranians are stockpiling nuclear material, they're obstructing the International Atomic Energy Agency, this, that, and the other thing, and they reported every single part of that IAEA report in whatever context they wanted, except the one part that was the most important part of the report. The only thing that the IAEA is actually mandated to do, really, under their safeguards agreement with Iran, and that is the agency continues to verify the non-diversion of declared nuclear material in Iran to any military or other special purpose. So all the rest of these, whatever they are, and you can describe them in detail uh, if you'd like, Mohammed, but none of them have anything to do with the IAE saying we are no longer able to verify yes. what happened to the uranium. It's all still right there. Every atom is accounted for. And there is no reason to believe that at this time, 
any of it has been diverted to any military or other special purpose inside that country as uh, per their safeguards agreement. Exactly. And, and people should know that IAEA has uh, cameras there, has inspectors on the ground uh, in, in Natanz and as well as in Boucher reactors, which is coming online. Now, regarding the Iran obstructing the work of IAEA inspector, uh, th- there were two points in the latest report. One was that Iran has refused uh, entry visa to two of the IAEA inspectors. First of all, according to Iran's safeguard agreements with the IAEA, Iran has the right to reject any inspector that it wants. Secondly, two out of a very large number of inspectors, while other inspectors are doing their normal work in Iran, is negligible. So making a big issue out of two inspectors that Iran has every right to reject is basically propaganda. The other obstruction issue was uh, was the fact that the IAEA asked Iran to allow it to take a sample of heavy water that Iran has produced in the Iraq facility and has stored in the Isfahan facility. But a, nu- uh, a heavy water re- uh, plant that produces heavy water is not covered by uh, non-nuclear non-proliferation treaty and the safeguard agreement. In other words, the IAEA has no authority whatsoever to ask Iran for having access to samples of heavy water. The IAEA even, IA even has even acknowledged it in the past. So the fact that Iran didn't allow it, and it has allowed it in the past, in the, in, in, if you look at the uh, previous reports, the IAEA says that they, ha- they allowed the IAEA to look at where they are stored and take the sample, doesn't mean anything. In other words, Iran has not violated its obligations towards its safeguard agreements. But People in this country or, or the mainstream in this country make a big, big issue out of, you know, Iran obstructing the, 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 uh, the work of IAEA. That's nonsense. It, 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 Iran hasn't done that. And, and, and uh, there are other issues in that, in that report that we can discuss. For example, Iran is stockpiling low enrich uranium. Yes, Iran uh, is stockpiling low enrich uranium, but they are all safeguarded. They are all weighed. Weighted, they are inspected, they are checked, they are they are uh, sealed in boxes and so on and so forth. And IAEA, as as you said, can account for every gram of it that that Iran is producing. So what? I mean, as long as they are safeguarded, uh, it, it means nothing. All right, everybody. It's uh, Maria Armadu- uh, Armudian's show. Pardon me. I'm Scott Horton from AntiWar.com filling in. I'm interviewing Mohammed Sahimi. Uh, he's a professor of chemical engineering at USC, and he writes for us at antiwar.com. And we're talking about all the hype about Iran's nuclear program. And you know how this works, Mohammed. It's been years and years on end of, well, I don't know, hundreds of separate news stories about different details of Iran's nuclear program. But what that amounts to in the the common understanding is a lot of smoke. There must be fire. Nuclear this, nuclear that. It never stops. And we all know what nuclear means. Mushroom clouds, atom exactly. bombs, dead Americans. And so it's it's Adolf Hitler's big lie technique. You just say the thing over and over again, and then there's people conclude that there just must be something going on that we must prevent. You know, same thing happened with Iraq where people said, well, of course Saddam Hussein did 9-11. Or else why would we have invaded the country? They just concluded that he must have done it or else why in the world would we start a war there? And it's the same kind of thing where people are left to form the false conclusion themselves based on the very heated and continuous propaganda through the TV. And, of course, nobody on TV understands what you understand about the nuclear program, Mohammed, and they don't ever invite you on Fox News or CNN (laughs) to parse. Well, what is the difference between the... Uh, for example, the mandate that the IAEA safeguards and continues to safeguard and verify the non-diversion of nuclear material versus all the rest of these things that they're asking questions about. I mean, it seems to me pretty specialized knowledge, right, that the safeguards agreement is one thing and a, a, a John Bolton maneuvered UN Security Council mandate to obey and prove a negative or die is an entirely separate thing that has been mandated by the Security Council to the IAEA to enforce even though that's not really their job, as you just said, when it comes to the heavy water. It's really none of their beeswax other than the U.S. insists, separately from the safeguards agreement, separately from the law that they've signed on and agreed to. Exactly. And and the other issues between IAE and Iran um, that every time a new report is published about uh, Iran's program uh, is brought up, they have to do with a laptop that was supposedly taken out of Iran uh, in 2004. 
Now, that's the so-called alleged studies documents. Exactly, alleged studies documents. And um, the IAEA, under pressure by the United States, has asked Iran to clarify um, um, several things that uh, allegedly were in the laptop. Iran